डू नॉट यूज डिजिटल रीड यू आर प्रोग्रामिंग योर आर्डवीनो फॉर पुश बटन द रॉन्ग वे पुश बटन आर रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एनी आर्डवीनो प्रोजेक्ट दे कैन बी यूज टू चेंज पर्टिकुलर मोड और कैन बी यूज टू चेंज पर्टिकुलर वेरिएबल्स इन एनी कोड But the problem is most of the makers don't even know how to use push buttons properly. How do I know it? Because and 9% of YouTubers are teaching you the really basic way of using push without telling its flaws or its problems. So in this video I will teach you how you can use your push buttons properly so that you can learn something new as well as write your code efficiently and make a good user experience for your project. This will be helpful for you in any interview or if you are going for jobs or making particular products that are sellable. So without wasting time, let's get started. The very basic method of using push buttons is look something like this. But there are a lot of problems with this approach. We will talk about them one by one. The very first problem is the bouncing of the signal. Let us try to print the values of digital read to the serial monitor using this command. We can see whenever we press the button, there are some garbage values at the end of the signal. These garbage values are due to the improper matching of the impedance between the push button and the digital read and the digital pins. This can be solved using a pull down resistance between the digital read pin and the ground pin. This will solve our problem. and hence we will get a perfect output problem number 2 sensitivity sensitivity stands for how long we press the push button to execute its work so for the basic statement if we press the push button for a little longer then this statement will works more than once so that means our execution will not be proper like you can see in this video when we push the press button the lights turns on and turns off instantly because the statement executes more than once so this is called sensitivity if we have any way of adjusting the sensitivity of this code then we will be able to determine the amount of time the push button needs to be pressed so if we add a little delay on the last of this statement then what will happen is this statement will not execute multiple times when we press the push button so in this way we can solve the sensitivity issue now let's move to the third and the most important issue which can never be solved using this basic approach problem number 3 the looping problem the arduino code always run in a linear manner it starts from the top goes to the bottom and ends in the bottom of the part and here in the loop function it works in circle so if it starts from the first statement ends to the last then again comes to the first statement so if we write a basic code like we are writing then after every execution our code will check for the button press but suppose there is a some a small amount of code that takes more than 1 second to execute like suppose there is a delay of 5 seconds then what will happen our arduino code will check for the press of the push button after every 5 seconds so that means we may have to press the push button directly for 5 seconds to execute the statement and this is a really big issue suppose we have a wifi connection in the code and our wifi is turned off then that means If the Wi-Fi is not turned on, then the function will never exit the while loop. That means our bottom part of the code, which is our button code, will never get executed. That means you keep on pressing your button, but it will never execute. So these kind of statements can never be solved using this basic approach. But don't worry, I have a solution for this, and the solution for this is known as interrupts. But before starting. the interrupts let's hear a word from the sponsor of this video ltm design ltm designer is the most famous of the top of the line pcb plan programming bundles available today it is created and advertised by ltm limited ltm designer incorporates instruments for all circuit configurations from schematics and hdl configuration cache to circuit reproduction 
signal honesty examination, PCB plan, FPGA-based implanted frameworks plan, and advancements. Likewise, the Altium Designer climate can be tweaked to meet a wide assortment of clients' prerequisites. Octopart, which was acquired by Altium and is the preferred search engine for electronic parts, which allows you to search across hundreds of distributors and thousands of manufacturers. Aside from this, Octoparts give you the most up-to-date parts data like specifications, data sheets, CAD models, etc. right in the design environment so you can focus more on your design, not on bombs. So check out Octoparts from the link in the video description and also get one month free for Elton Designer from the link in the description of this video. Let's get back to our topic. Now here comes the solution. The solution is using interrupts. Wait, wait, wait. Don't get shocked. Interrupts is not a rocket science. It's really simple to understand. Let me give you an example. If someone comes from here and touches my shoulder and give me a glass of water to drink, I stop immediately here, take the glass of water, drink it, give it back to him, and continues my work. This is called a uh, interrupt. Uh, the touching on my shoulder acts as an interrupt and me drinking water is the interrupt service routine or known as ISR. That means, suppose there is another work which is more important than the work I am currently doing, then an interrupt can tell me to do that work first, then come on my work again. So, what we will do, our button pin will act as the interrupt and then Using that button to turn on or turn off the LED will be our interrupt service routine. That means our interrupt is the button pin and our ISR will be this. And implementing this in Arduino is really simple. The interrupt can be used in five modes. The first one is high. So whenever the pin is high, the interrupt will be triggered. Then second one is low. Whenever the pin will be low, the interrupt will be triggered. Then we have rising and falling. Rising means whenever the pin goes from low to high, then the interrupt will be triggered. And for the falling, whenever our pin goes from high to low. And we can also set it to change. That means whenever the pin changes from low to high or high to low, then our interrupt will be triggered. It is that simple. So we have five modes. Now let's see the implementation. So first of all, in the setup function, we will define our interrupt. Then we will create the ISR or the interrupt service routine. We will make a basic function, void function name, and we will write the code. That is our ISR. That is that simple. So let us see how it works. I have currently set it to raising high. So whenever I press the push button, it works at that time. So let's see how it works. Whenever I am pressing the button, the LED is turning on. And I am again pressing the button, the LED is turning off. In the same way, we can use it to falling. So whenever I am releasing the button, it is triggering. So this is the simple working of the interrupts. If you want to add the sensitivity to it, then in the ISR, we will give a small delay. Then we will again read if the pin is high or not. So here, instead of delay, we will use delay microseconds because delay function is an interrupt in itself. So we will not use it. Delay microseconds, then we will read if the pin is currently high or not. And then we will add the same code. So amount of delay we set there will adjust our sensitivity. So in this part, our bouncing is solved our sensitivity is solved and the most important the looping function is also solved suppose we are stuck in a wi-fi loop a while loop where the while loop is checking if the wi-fi is connected or not and the wi-fi is turned off so that means the wi-fi will never connect and the arduino board will never exit but in case of interrupts whenever we press the arduino will stop checking for the wi-fi and directly goes to the interrupt executes it and again come to the Wi-Fi. So that means our Arduino may be doing 
whatever it is doing, it will leave the code and works on your interrupts. It is that simple. This approach will work with this approach will always work whatever you are doing and it is better for every situation for any admin. Due to availability of multiple modes, we can mold our code to any type we want. If we want our things to be work on when the button is released, we can set that. If we want something else, we can set that also. So it opens another door for a lot of opportunities while coding. This will enhance your coding skills to a next level and you will be able to use push buttons in a really better way. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. If you, if you like this video, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to watch more of my videos, then you can hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.